Good morning, First Baptist, and welcome to all of our friends viewing from around town here in Tulsa, but not only here in Tulsa, but all over the state and even throughout the country. We want to welcome you to our, our final virtual service happening um, this in, in this year of 2020. Welcome again. We are so appreciative to have you this morning. We want to open up with a scripture uh, from Matthew 5, verses 15 and 16, to think and meditate on this morning. It reads, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under the bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. And in the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We thank God this morning for allowing us to be a light and thinking about the responsibilities that comes with representing the light as we move into this next year. Let us pray. Father, we love you. We just thank you for being the light in our salvation. We know that with you, Lord, you are, we have no reason to fear. We know that in this year that has been unlike any for us in this generation, dear Heavenly Father, we have put our trust in you and you have brought us through and we just thank and praise you for it. We just pray that you would just continue to be with this church, be with all those that are listening virtually, dear Heavenly Father, just bless each home represented and just keep us in your care is our prayer in your son's name. Amen.
Malachi 3 and 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it.
that we could put trust in. Mm -hmm. But when we put trust in someone who never fails us, mm -hmm. you're right. That is a trust that can never be replaced. And our trust as believers in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ should always be in our Lord. All right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come thanking you this morning, Father God. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to stand and yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. proclaim your word, Father God. For I know that our pastor could have called anybody, but he called me and gave me notice that I would stand on this day, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Father, because the days have passed and you have allowed me to continue in my strength. You have allowed me to stay well. That I would be here on this day, Father God, ready to proclaim your gospel message. Now, Father God, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross, Father God, and that the Holy Ghost would stand up in me, Lord, that the words that proceed from my mouth not be mine, but yours, that when people hear this message, Father, they don't see a man standing, but they see uh, your word being proclaimed, Father God. Be with me, stay my nerves this morning, for my hands are shaking. Steady my mind this morning, for it is all over the place, Lord, because when you have me to do a task, Satan sometimes stands up. So I ask you to suppress him, Lord, that your word would go forward, Father God. And then, after your word is being spoken, Father God, if there be any that may not know you in the free pardon of their sins, Father God, ask, let them ask. Let it be on their heart to ask. What must they do to be saved? What must they do to become a child of God, Father God? I ask that you would pluck their hearts and their minds, Father God, this morning. Put your word on them as we move from one year to another. We pray, Lord, for all that is involved this morning with your word going forth. I pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 From the Word of God this morning, I will re be reading from the book of Acts, the first chapter, verse number 8. Right. From the book of Acts, I will be reading from Acts 1 and 8. Right. And it reads as thus, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the other parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. There is the reading of the Word of God. All right. I would like just for a moment to speak from this message, this, this title right here. What were you chosen for? What were you chosen for? All right. One writer said, I care not where I go or how I live or what I endure. Mm -hmm. So that I may save souls. When I sleep, I dream of them. When I wake, they are the first thought on my mind. David Bernard. Mm -hmm. One writer penned it this way. Have you ever wondered why when God saved you, he left you here on earth? Mm -hmm. If God wanted to, he could have taken you directly into heaven right. the moment that you were saved. But he did not, which means that we were left here on earth for a particular purpose. Right. What purpose uh, were you and I chosen for? William Ardenot, to every true Christian, two things may be said. You have need of Christ, and Christ has need of you. Now, if you were here right now, sitting in this sanctuary, you would have a look of bewilderment on your face because we've all been taught throughout the years that God needs man for nothing. Right. That, that God is God alone and, and God's uh, 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 purpose goes forward whether man 
works for him or against him. That, 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 that God doesn't need us. Yes, sir. There is nothing that you or I can do for God that God can't do for himself. The fact that a Christian is still here and not in heaven is proof that there is something for him or her to do here. And if he or she is not doing it, not doing what they were chosen to do, the neglect shows either that he or she is yet a Christian or that he or she grieves Christ. The word grieves means to make sad or sorrowful, cause sorrow, pain, or distress. Christ has given us a command. We have been given a commission, yet some of us have yet to answer the call. So, 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 so it is like when I tell my child to do something and they fail to do it. That grieves me. That makes me sad that I've given a command and my child has yet to follow it. God has given us a command through Jesus Christ to witness and some of us have failed to answer the call. So we grieve Christ because we have not answered we have not answered his call. You're right. What were, what were you chosen for? What is it that, that, that we can do here on, on, on earth that, 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 that we can't do in heaven? Watch this. We can sing here on earth. You're right. We, 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 we can sing. We, we, we're going to be able to, 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 to sing uh, in heaven. We can pray on earth. And, and we can pray in heaven. We have fellowship on earth. And there's going to be fellowship in heaven. They said once we get to heaven, what a time, what a time. And we're going to be able to sing and pray and fellowship and jump. And we're going to act forever be in the presence of the Lord. But what is it yes, sir. That, that we can do here on earth? That, 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 that will not take place in heaven. There is but one thing that we can do right now that won't take place in heaven. We can tell the lost about Jesus Christ right now. Watch this. There will be none that has not accepted Christ as their Lord and personal Savior in heaven. You're right. So, so the good news has to be shared now through you, through me, and through us. Once we get to heaven, then we'll be standing beside folks who already believe. So there won't be a need to share Christ because Christ will be right there. Uh -huh. What were you chosen? What were you chosen for? Jesus, knowing his return to heaven, was at hand explaining to his disciples what they were to do after his departure. And what he said to them then still stands for us right now today. It says, ye shall be my witnesses. Jesus thought enough of his disciples that in, 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 in his last days here on earth, after he was resurrected, he met with his disciples knowing the hour was at hand for him to descend into heaven, left one commission. He said, ye shall be my witnesses. You're right. That, that, that word shall. Every time I use it, I go back and look up the definition. It says it's a strong assertion. So Jesus was passionate when he said the word shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It says ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. But watch this. Here is something that I found over the years that is not in this passage of scripture. It does not say that ye shall speak in tongues. It doesn't say ye shall run down the aisles. It doesn't even say that ye shall preach, teach, clean, feed, help with bills, sing or play. 
It does not mention anything that we do under the name of Christ mm -hmm. coming out of the church today. Mm -hmm. But watch this. The Bible says, once I accept Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, that my faith, they, uh, James says, faith without works is dead. That my faith would allow me to do certain things because it is said that these things I should do according to the word of God. I should feed because I have faith in Jesus. I should go because I have faith in Jesus. All the, 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 the ministries that are birthed out of the church, we should do because we have faith in Jesus. But when the Holy Ghost comes, it gives us power not to do those things, but it gives us power to share the word. Yes, sir. The scripture says, says it better, but Jesus himself said, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, it does so that we shall witness and we shall receive power to do so. Power that gives us boldness to say what needs to be said, to go where, where, where we need to go. Power to speak to folks that we would not necessarily approach. Power to, 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 to suffer for, 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 for the word of Christ. It gives us power to be bold, to go places, to speak to folks, to do things that we would not ordinarily do because we might be a little afraid, but when it comes to spreading the word of God, God says, I will send forth the Holy Spirit to get you to, oh. What's this? What, what, what were you chosen for? What's this? God uses people like us to, for, to, to, to convince other people like us to believe in him. God uses a teacher uh, to convince a teacher that, 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 that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That he's our hope. God uses a drug dealer. He takes him and cleans him up to go back and tell other drug dealers. That, 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 that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God will use a mechanic while you're getting your car fixed and his hand is underneath uh, the, the hood to talk to you about Christ. God uses people like you and like me to tell people like us to believe, to believe in him. Found that strange day. I read this passage many, many times, but then when I read it this past week, it began to break down because in that passage it says in Jerusalem, Jerusalem uh, was the city where uh, the disciples came from, and, and, and the word uh, Jerusalem stands for, which stands for home. What are, uh, what is your witness? at home to your family and, 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 and those who know you best. What is your witness to them? Jerusalem is God. What, what, what is my witness to the brethren and the sister in, 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 in Tulsa, those that I'm close to? What is the witness to my children and my children's children? What is my witness at home? And then it branches out into Judea, meaning uh, our neighbors, uh, people in, in the next circle, uh, my co-worker, that person that I come in contact with every time I walk into the convenience store and he greets me and I greet him. What is my witness to him when I go to the, my favorite restaurant? I sit in my favorite seat hoping that my favorite waitress or, or waiter would come that I may be able to greet them. What is my witness? In, in, in Judea and, and in Samaria, those who are racially hated. When is the last time you or I, you or I spoke to someone outside of our race right. about Christ? When is the last time that we sat down with someone that we don't see eye to eye on? because of the color of our skin and share Christ. 
Samaria all through the Bible was I hated a, a, a city. The, you, didn't, you didn't mingle with the people in Samaria. And sometimes race keeps us from mingling with other people. And, and that makes the, 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 the word of God stagnant. It can't get out. Unless we do what we are chosen, are chosen to do. And then the uttermost parts of the earth, some of us will never venture out and go to other countries. But we may talk to somebody. We may share with somebody. Somebody may come to Christ who is well traveled and therefore the word goes further than just Tulsa. It goes further than just New York. It reaches places around the globe where the word is not being spoken. Right? What were you what were you chosen for? You were chosen to witness, to declare the truth. What's the truth? 2 Corinthians 15 and 20 says that uh, fifth, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 18, 18 through 20 it says that we were enemies we were enemies of God. And God used Jesus Christ to reconcile us back to himself. So we became ministers of reconciliation. We became ambassadors in this foreign land to tell folks that, that, that their sins, the things that they've done, will not be held against them once they come to know Christ in the free pardon of their sins. We became ambassadors, ministers of reconciliation to, to ensure people that there's hope. And that hope lies, that hope lies in, in Christ. Uh, when, 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 when you have to be, the reconciliation had to take place. In order to reconcile anything, there had to be a sin offering. So in our reconciliation, in the witness, the, 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 the sin offering, uh, there had to be shedding of blood. Therefore, Jesus went to Calvary's cross and was poked in this, and blood came. Oh, y'all got to see it right there, that the blood was shed just like it was in the Old Testament. They would take a sin offering, and you would cut it and drain the blood. Oh. Uh -huh. Jesus was our sin offering, and that sacrifice was made on our behalf. That is, that is, that is, that is the reconciliation part. So, so, so when I come across folks and, and I need to witness and I need to share the word of God, I do it because I was chosen to do it. It says in, in, in 1 Peter that we are a chosen, a chosen people, a royal priesthood. But what are we chosen for? We're chosen to be God's voice here on earth to spread the gospel message. Watch this. Today, we talk about this pandemic. We talk about it. It is one of the most terrible things there is. Folks are leaving this earth at an alarming rate. You're right. I talked to a relative of mine. She put some stuff on social media that she's lost five people close to her in the last week. Mm -hmm. Since the summertime, I've lost seven people that I'm close to, seven people that I know personally, they're no longer here. And, and, and when folks leave, the first thing we say uh, is we put them in, in heaven, we say after from the body, they're present with the Lord and, and that they're in a better place. But my question to you is, how do you know? Did you do what you were chosen to do? Did you check and see if that person Oh, y'all don't hear me. We sit in churches Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and we assume that the person next to us is going to heaven because they have a suit and a tie on, that they can stand up and say amen, that they can pray like none other. We have to begin to do what we were chosen to do because folks are leaving here. I need to know that the people that I love, I will see again. And the only way that I can do that is if I share the word of God. Watch this. When, when I first met Reverend Williams, Reverend Williams threw jabs at me. And I threw jabs back. Reverend Williams' jabs were checking to see if I knew the law. And I would throw jabs back, reassuring him that I knew the Lord. Now watch this. Me and Reverend Williams sit in the pulpit together. Reverend Williams 
wasn't finna sit in the pool bed with somebody unless he knew that they knew Christ. And if I didn't know, he was going to share Christ with me. So we bond, we, we have bonded. We have a fellowship, but we have a friendship. No matter where he's at in the world, I'm always gonna check on him. No matter where I'm at, he's always gonna check on me because he cared enough about me to not take it for granted that because I have on a suit and sit in the pool bed, that I'm Our witness mm -hmm. is that Jesus Christ took on a fleshly body, mm -hmm. came down to heaven, mm -hmm. took on the sins of man, mm -hmm. so much so that he was beaten. Mm -hmm. There was a crown of thorns put on his head. That he drug an old rugged cross up a hill. Yes, sir. And then he allowed himself. He allowed himself. Watch this. He didn't have to do it. He allowed himself to be put on that cross. He allowed them to nail him to that cross. He allowed them to put that cross upright. Now, see, they thought they were doing something uh, different. They thought they were being halfway nickel slick. But he had to be risen so all could see. Mm. And he gave up the ghost. They didn't take it. He gave it up for you and me. And then on the third day, they say Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hand. And when he rose with all power in his hand, he did not leave his disciples standing because they were in the room and they were going through some things. And some of them wanted to go back fishing, but the Lord showed up. And when he showed up, he showed up. He said, I'm only here for a brief time to let y'all know that this temple that they destroyed Oh my God, was that a wreck that, that, that the Bible says that they would destroy it, but it would read, ah, oh, it would read. He was back. And because he was back, he told the disciples, y'all need to wait here. And the Father is going to send the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is going to give you power. What is the power for? That you can speak about me. Uh -huh. What were you chosen for? I look at the pandemic mm -hmm. as an opportunity mm -hmm. for me to share with folks who are still. When I call, I know they're there. They can't go nowhere. <laughs> so I look at it as an opportunity to share the word of God. Because yes, people are trying to figure out, Pastor, mm -hmm. church members, yes. my church folks that are listening, what is going on mm -hmm. in this world? Mm -hmm. I believe the Lord is saying, yes, my church needs to answer their call You're right. and begin to share me mm -hmm. with those that may not know me. Amen. 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 The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. You can't do nothing. It's the gift of God. You can't work enough. There's not enough you can do. At least any man should boast. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short. That even before God today, we are as filthy rags. But the Bible says that if with your mouth you confess, Lord, you are who you said you are. Lord, I've done some things that I should not have done. I've said some things. I've been some places. But Father, if you would forgive me and allow me to become one of your own, and thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God, after Jesus gave up the ghost, raised him from the dead. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Just like I said about the Holy Ghost, there's nothing else added in there. Confess, believe, 
home right now, all you have to do is what they say, pray a sinner's prayer. What is that prayer? Confess to the Lord that you haven't been right. Confess to him that you need his help. Ask him into your life, into your heart, and believe that God raised him from the dead. The word of God says,